All right, so let's just take a minute and um, go over what you will be learning today in class. All right, so number one, um, we're going to talk about what exactly Unicode is. We've talked about ASCII in the past, and ASCII, remember, is basically taking um, various letters and numbers and putting them into the binary system. So we're going to talk about the difference between ASCII and Unicode. Then we're going to talk about the difference between analog and digital data. So what you're going to be doing today is you're going to be watching this video on Unicode and digital approximations, and then there is a Unicode activity that you're going to complete in Schoology. You are supposed to have a quiz today, however, that has been moved to next class period. So next class period, please be prepared for a quiz. And the quiz can be on anything that we've talked about in class. Make sure you've completed the readings in, um, in Codeo, and so it could be on anything in those readings. So what you need to do today is make sure that you're reading section 3.7 and 3.8. And as you're reading those, remember that you can continue to do your vocabulary. Um, this is actually due at the end of class today, the Unicode activity. Um, it is due at the end of class today because there is plenty of time to watch the video and complete this activity. So if it is turned in after class today, it will be considered late. And then after you complete that activity, um, make sure you read the emojis article right here. So what you can do is you can pull up this the slides so that you can actually click on the emojis article. It's also linked in Schoology. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the difference between ASCII and Unicode. So remember, we talked about ASCII last class period, and it's the American Standard Code for basically exchanging information. Now, the thing about the ASCII code is that it's focused on English, so it's limited globally. So that means if your computer is encoded with the ASCII code, then that means it might not be able to read something that is in French or Spanish or another language, okay? So that limits us to the number of characters that we can actually have on our computer. Remember the ASCII code contains um, two to the seventh values, which is actually eight spaces um, because it starts with two to the zero, so that's 128 characters. Now, what we're gonna talk about today is something called Unicode. So this is another text encoding method that is basically used globally. So it represents most world languages. If you take a look at this, so Unicode actually contains two to the 16 values, which is 64,536 characters. So Unicode uses text encoding. It can also include emojis. Now, what's the point of having Unicode over ASCII or anything else? What Unicode allows computers to do is to process various languages. So for example, in the past, if a computer was text encoded in French, it would not be able to process any other language such as Japanese or Hebrew. But now since Unicode has most languages in it, we use this encoding method in computers so that your computer can process multiple languages at one time. It's also used in Google Chrome um, and Firefox. They use that to encode the text in there. So what it basically does is it provides a unique number for every character that we have. It doesn't matter what you're using, what platform, what device, what language, Java, whatever. So in most modern software companies um, have adopted this because this way they can use many different platforms to represent many different languages, okay? So before this, um, computers basically we're only able to use the characters that were encoded in that specific language, okay? Um, so they'd have to have two different encoding systems, but because of Unicode, they don't need to have that anymore. Now, what I would like you to do is I would like you to take a minute and search for the character map, um, which is gonna show you these characters and the Unicode symbol on them. So what you need to do is at the bottom here, Okay, in the search box, you need to type in character map. And if you notice, this will show up. So you're going to click on it. Okay, once you click on it, notice how you have all of these characters in here. Okay, and at the bottom right here, this is your Unicode encoding system. So this is Unicode plus 00C3. So that means on any device, any computer that you have, this would be the same, okay? This is how it is encoded. Now, if you'll notice, it has like multiple languages in here. So we have the Latin code here. Now, if you scroll down, um, 
you know, for example, right here, we have an Arabic code right here. So this code is the same on any computer, which is, like I said, allows us to use uh, multiple languages on the same computer. All right, so you're gonna have to use that for your activity in Schoology today. If you have a Mac, what you'll wanna do is open up any app. I would try Notes. When you go to Edit, um, go to Emoji and Symbols, and then when you right click on the symbol and copy the character info, so you're gonna copy this, and then you're gonna paste that character info in a Google Doc, or you, if you opened up Notes, you can paste it on Notes. Then you'll notice at the bottom, the U plus at the bottom is the Unicode value for that symbol. If you have questions on that, on how to get that, you can always um, email me or message me in Schoology. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is something called a digital approximation. Um, so digital approximations were a huge revolutionary development, the photocopy machine. So my question is, could you make a, a copy of this star so that it is an exact perfect copy? So I want you to think about that for a second and we'll kind of discuss what exactly that means. Take a look at these numbers. So could I copy this list of numbers and make a perfect copy of it? Okay, so everything would be exactly the same. Nothing would be lost whenever I made the copies. Now, so what we're talking about is basically something called a digital approximation. So the numbers that I showed to you on the previous slide were just coordinates, okay, so these numbers were just coordinates of the points of the stars that I have right here. So what the computer is able to do, it's able to make a perfect copy of the star each time by transmitting the coordinates instead of attempting to replicate the image in its original form. So basically what it's saying is it's not trying, think about if you're trying to hand draw a star. A star. So if you're physically looking at the star and trying to hand draw it, that is challenging to do. However, if you were given the coordinates of the star and plotted the coordinates and were like connecting the dots, okay, you would make a much better copy by connecting the dots than you would by freeforming it, okay? Now, so one of the most revolutionary things um, digitally is the fact that when we create a digital copy, um, the original image does not degrade. So even if I make a digital copy of this st star and then I make another digital copy of that and another digital copy, they're all going to be exactly the same, okay? So it's not going to degrade or make the image fuzzier or change over time. It's one of the most important concepts um, in the digital revolution is making these digital copies. Okay, so, and then next thing we're gonna talk about is the difference between analog and digital data. So digital data is discrete. So with a discrete number, um, it, you're counting in increments. So think of like counting like one, two, three, four, five, without the numbers in between. You could count by halves, 0.5, one, 1 1.5, two, 2.5. That's discrete data, you are counting in, in, in the same increments each time. Now, when we have a digital cop data that is discrete, that means that the digital copies are approximations of the original image. They're not going to be exact because they are copying it, think of it like copying it in chunks, okay? So if you're copying it in chunks, that's sort of like your pixelated data. So it's taking that and it's just taking it in chunks and then copying those various pieces. However, we have another thing called analog data. And analog data is continuous. That means we don't have to break up the image in order to make a copy of it. Okay, so think of this as like a number line. I'm not counting from one to two to three. If I'm going from one to two, I'm including every single solitary number in between. So continuous means I'm not counting by a set increment. I'm counting every single solitary piece in between. All right, so when we digitalize natural phenomena, so nature is continuous or analog. So we're basically not chunking this up into pieces. However, the digital representations are discrete, okay, because we can't obviously 
get every single solitary tiny piece in nature, but we can chunk it up into very, very, very tiny um, pieces so that it does create a copy that is obviously like a relatively good copy of what we had. Now, take a look at this right here. Um, do you believe that this temperature is digital or analog? So just kind of think about that for a second. Hopefully you recognize that this um, thermometer is actually analog because if you notice, it is a, it's not discrete, it's continuous, it's including every single solitary number between um, where it started at zero, you know, up to maybe a hundred, okay? So it's every single solitary decimal in between, okay? So if you notice, okay, it's completely continuous. Okay, I can read every single solitary decimal in between. Now, how about this temperature? So this temperature is on a scale, okay? Um, notice it's 98.1, maybe the next one would be 98.2. Would that be digital or analog? Okay, so in this case, this one would be digital, okay? This is discrete data. And the reason for that is, is because this is going up in increments of one, or of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It's not continuous, okay? Now, what happens when a physical artifact is digitized, okay? So physical artifact would be something, you know, like something in nature, okay? So what happens is this state space, so remember the state space is all the range of possibilities. So let's just say I want to digitalize a picture of a rock, right? So what happens with that rock is the state space or all of the different various pieces of that rock is broken down into chunks, okay? Each of those chunks are called quanta. Now, each quantum is converted into a value. So each little piece of that picture is converted into a value. Okay, it's converted into binary. And then what that binary value is going to do is that binary value is going to map onto that specific portion of that image. So basically like a color from that image, okay? Now, how the binary represents the artifact depends on the algorithm. So for example, if we have ASCII, okay, whenever that, whenever we have that binary representation of ASCII, that to get the digital version of that, the computer knows, hey, there's an algorithm. This is, I'm looking at binary, but I'm looking at in the ASCII code. So it would actually produce the correct text, okay? In Unicode, okay, Unicode, that would say I'm looking at, yes, a binary, but I'm looking at the Unicode encoding system. So that binary is gonna map to the Unicode. So in this case, it would be an image. So it would say, yes, this is binary, but this is mapping to the image algorithm in order to produce that correct image. Now, what is the difference between an analog versus a digital copy? So which one do you think is perfectly, so what is, perfectly copied in a digital copy, which copy is most like the original, okay? Would that be the analog or the digital, okay? Now, analog copies, what analog copies are, are they're basically taking a picture of the document. So an analog is taking a picture of the document, okay? However, Digital copies, what they are doing is they are scanning the document and they're storing it into memory. So when you are, so think about like when you have a photocopy, you make a copy and as you copy that again and again and again, that copy actually degrades over time. But what a digital copy does is since it saves all of that information digitally, then when you send it again, that digital information is not going to be, is not going to change. And therefore that is going to be a perfect copy. So a digital image, an example of one would be sent from one phone to another. Okay. So that, that's all, that image is stored in the memory. And then I could send that again, and that image is not going to degrade over time. So a digital image can also be printed on an inkjet printer because your printer is getting an exact copy 
It's getting the digital copy of what the image is versus like on a photocopy machine where it's basically, it's making, um, it's scanning the document, okay? But it's not actually making a perfect digital copy of it. All right, so what you need to do is read the emojis article and complete the Unicode activity in school.